Twitch and YouTube, instant VOD uploads like the set you are about to see right now. Here we are, and you know what? Sonic Fiend is gonna. Is this a match? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, this is the match. <laughs> just uh, just Sonic Wii Fit. Being Sonic Wii Fit. Sonic Fiend looks like a Sonic fan. It might be the hat and the shirt, the... <laughs> yeah, but I was say. It, it might be something else. It I don't might know. be the name Sonic Fiend that yeah, like right. kind of gives Sonic vibes off. Yeah. Right. Maybe. I don't know. I love how Sonic fiends are so. I mean, Sonic fans are so shamelessly like proud of being Sonic fans. Yeah, they, you know they're a Sonic. They're fan. like they're always blue something, <laughs> Sonic something. Like they, they can't just have like or slow fast. <laughs> but anyway, back into this game, man. There have been multiple times where Sonic Fiend has gone super close to beating John Numbers in a set. Uh, there's a couple at Zeno. There's a couple at Waypoint, and Sonic Fiend would always. Ooh, switch between Sonic or Kazuya. Yeah, Sonic Fiend, I think, is a player who has been slowly, really, like, slowly improving each Xeno. I feel like I know they got 13th last Xeno getting an upset. Wow. I can't remember on who, but they got a pretty nice upset. So, um, definitely a player who's improving. I think one thing from them, they have a really, like, strong punish game and solid neutral. I think they have a tendency to get impatient, though. You know, I know they, they can opt to just, like, throw out those smash attacks a bit willy-nilly when, like, they feel the need to, so... Hopefully, Sonic Fiend can find that patience because Numbers will exploit it very well. Yeah, and exploit it he did. Right now, Numbers is still um, pretty much in the lead, but of course, Sonic Fiend can easily um, get that back. But you saw how Numbers was just stationary. Like, he did not want to move. He just shielded there and waited for Sonic Fiend to throw all of, all of his homing attacks Ooh. before um, punishing them. Yeah, it's, it's like... Numbers does not care how many times you're moving back and forth with Sonic. He will not react unless you do something near him that is punishable, you know? He's got that, like, st uh, stone wall patience, you know? Yeah, and that's definitely a difference in their playstyle. Numbers can wait. He's fine. You can go game 10, um... What is it called? When, uh, and then, um, time him out. Numbers will do it. That's right. the, such a power of numbers, just being incredibly patient. And because of that patience, leads like this are so in, like difficult to surmount. You're not really going to have a point where numbers is going to give away any free openings, any free stocks. So if you're Sonic Feed right now, the only way you can do this now over a stock lead is by just getting insane like read after read on numbers because of how uh, strong his game plan is. Ooh, getting that back here and um, pushing numbers out. Maybe trying to go for another... Edge guard! Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that, didn't hit. That, that looked like it should have hit, but numbers barely floating under it with the hula hoop. It's it's our it's a main character plot. Okay, there we go. We have a break in the Minati with numbers gain that really good back hit affair. And now just likes to opt to put that, um, put the down smash on the bouncing ball, or volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bouncing ball. <laughs> put it is a ball that is bouncing, yeah. Because it totally covers the ground space where Sonic will spin dash. And that was a very, I would say, a very, even though it was like two stocks and 100%, it was very convincing. I felt like yeah. Numbers was never at a point where he was worried about losing the lead or the game. Yeah. He had a very confident download on where Sonic he was going to be. Yeah, very clean, very simple. Ah, simple uh, and clean. Um, and we saw numbers just like chilling under that platform because Sonic Fiend cannot enter from above. Sonic Fiend just can't attack him from the way that he wants to. And um, I mean, is he a, a Kingdom Hearts song? <laughs> oh, I was like, numbers. I believe uh, likes to select uh, the songs a lot. Oh, oh my goodness, he's also here. Joining us right here. Oh my God. So that's Sonic Fiend picking the songs as we what see numbers about? in the little production side. Oh uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I recall. I had a feeling. Oh yeah. So Nintendo. Acting. Hey guys. So John came back to ask me if I, if we could play Kingdom Hearts music, and I said no. I know that there was one tweet saying like, "Hey guys, we're in the clear. I uploaded something like I, I uploaded a total of one video to YouTube and it didn't get flagged." Yeah, because YouTube is that precise. Let's give it some time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bye bye.
Definitely, this is like the first tournament we're ever going to be really seen with Sora and by extension Kingdom Hearts music. So we're going to give it a second, but regardless, Sonic Fiend picking FD against the Wii Fit, sticking to Sonic, not going to switch to the newfound Sora. Yeah, it's just shielding and waiting, and honestly, he waited for that shield HP to go a little low before he can finally peek in from the top. And this is a, a great start for Sonic Fiend. It's gonna be so important that you maintain this overall like percent lead throughout, uh, and not let numbers get like one of those deep breathing combos, because then numbers can go back to his game plan that was working so well in game one. Yeah, you saw numbers just run out, trying to go for that um, downer just to close out the stock. And Sonic Fiend, rather than approaching as much as he did in the previous game, he like waited it out, ran away more, which honestly you should do. And um, right now he's at an advantage. Yeah, right there. That's that was he was like kind of losing the momentum he got from that beginning like zero to seventy, but then clutching that F smash out. Now this is where Sonic Fiend can make this game like totally change the tempo if you can run away with this stock lead get some good per uh, percent four percent not that much oh wow and now two percent as we fit heels numbers was definitely expecting that definitely knew where he's going and honestly based on sonic king's reaction he definitely felt a little silly after that it's easy to feel silly against john numbers able to like we were saying just stand still and wait for you to do something and totally, yeah, calling out that spin dash. Deep breathing is going to be such a useful tool. It will always just totally stop that spin dash when fully charged. And honestly, um, the game is played more patient. Something that we notice that Sonic Fiend sometimes is not when playing. This patience is equalizing the, um, the, the stocks and the percentages. And it's giving numbers not as many options to punish as he would normally want to. Yeah, in addition, I think that patience is being aided by this pick of FD. I think there's no platforms to kind of shield numbers from above. Uh, so because of that, Sonic Feed's able to find pockets a lot easier just being able to spin dash from the side, not have to worry about a platform uh, protecting numbers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, immediately getting that deep breathing, going for that dash attack and closing out the stock. I feel like this is where Numbers shines the most, where he's feeling confident, he's feeling himself, he's ready to throw out his usual Wii Fit number moves. And there you go, in the blink of an eye, Sonic Fiend at 60. Okay, and yeah, Sonic Fiend's gonna need to stop pretty much. Okay. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> they heard you, they heard you. Uh, you're welcome for that coaching, Sonic Fiend. But Oh, wow, <laughs> but okay it isn't then. Enough. <laughs> but it isn't enough coaching, wow. Uh, both of my senses being cut off right there by some together. quick stocks being taken. That spiked from Wii Fit's, like, stomach. Yeah, that, that looked that a was... little uh, little strange. I'm going to need an explanation on that one. I mean, by the end of it, Sonic Fiend played so much better. At least in this game in general, Sonic Fiend played more patient, played better, and overall just didn't commit to too many things that... Um, would have gotten him punished, which happened a lot in game one. Yeah, it, it was just a matter of not letting numbers get those strings like we saw in the last stock, like that zero to 70, because you simply can't, you just really can't afford that damage to be like taken so quickly. And Sonic Fiend, it was even because he was avoiding that, but at the end he didn't, and that's just what made it um, into almost a two stock. I believe it was like a JV, JV2. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you know what? Um, overall, very convincing as um, Henry said during the first game. That spike was just... That was... It was very unexpected. I was not expecting the spike because it was a very slow-paced game. Um, and then the spike came out of nowhere. Which, honestly, considering how long um, Sonic Fiend honed... That, that was Wii Fit's what? stomach. That was Wii Fit's stomach. <laughs> See, the hitbox is that target right there. That's the target right there. They were like, yeah. Exactly. Nani, nani kore? What is that? Yeah, that, um, that's Wii Fit's hitboxes right there. But, um, you know, if you want to see more Wii Fit hitboxes, one place you can go 